Amazon has a new laptop that has just recently released in Europe. It's called the Magic Book Pro 16. 16 inch IPS screen up to 165 hertz, 500 nits brightness with it. It's powered by the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H. That has a maximum turbo of 4.5 gigahertz and 18 threads in total. So it's got a bit of power to it. Intel Arc graphics, one terabyte SSD, and the RAM, it's 24 gigabytes, running at 6,400 mega transfers. It's got Thunderbolt 4, 75 watt hour battery, and runs Windows 11 Home. So we do have a quick start guide, warranty card. Our power supply is 135 watts. This is Honor's Supercharge. It's gonna work with their other devices too as well. And a power cable, well, this is just using a standard connector here, and it plugs into the top like so. So the weight of the laptop does match what Honor's claim is, so 1.79 kilos, but what I wanna know is the total travel weight because you will probably be taking that charger with you. So 2.28 kilos. Now you can get it in two colors, this purple, which I do like, or the white. Now the white would be a lot better at just not really showing up the fingerprints. You can see a few smudges, fingerprints, quite easily shown with this color being a little bit darker. That's why if you don't want that, go with the white color, but white later on, if you're gonna be using it for a few years, sometimes those whites can turn a little bit yellow and then you get some fading on the keycaps, but you won't get it here. So we have a, a backlit keyboard. This is alloy, the top is alloy as well, and by the way, the hinge, it does feel very good. And it goes all the way back, which is excellent. And pressing down on the top here, there really is no flex on that. So if you are gonna be placing this in a backpack with some books, you don't have to worry about the screen and pressing up against uh, the keyboard marking that screen. It's not gonna happen there. So a nice, large, full-sized keyboard. Now the travel on this, this is 1.5 millimeters. And pressing down here, there really is no flex, no bounce. It's a very rigid feeling keyboard and it is good. And we do have the number pad right here and the power button over this side, which also doubles as a fingerprint reader for Windows Hello. Palm rest, alloy again with that paint job, which yes, you will see a few smudges and fingerprints on it. And then our touchpad. I like this touchpad. It's not a touchpad that I feel like I need to uh, stop using it and plug in a mouse because it's bad or anything. No, it's quite good. And the finer movements with the mouse are really good. It tracks nicely. So it is an accurate, smooth feeling touchpad with the two hardware left and right mouse buttons. And of course you do have your Windows 11 gestures with it too. So good keyboard, good touchpad, it all checks out. Looking at what ports are available to us, we have Thunderbolt 4, so that's good to see. They've got the faster port here, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and then a 3.5 millimeter. You can just see a loudspeaker here. So it's sideways down firing and they're okay. Later I'll give you a sample of what the loudspeakers do sound like. And then looking at the other side, oh, there's nothing there. That is because the ports, the rest of them are on the back. Something that we don't normally see. So two exit vents for the fan. There's also exit vents on the side that you just saw before. These are USB 3.2s, but Gen 1, both of these type A's. HDMI 2.1 for our video out. Now along the bottom about here, we do have a 75 watt hour battery, which for PC Mark will give us about 12 hours in that test. But me using it myself, I'm seeing around seven to eight hours and that's at 30% brightness. It really depends on what you're doing. You do something a bit more demanding, you're gonna get less than that. So we have 24 gigabytes of RAM. I, it's a bit of a strange combination, but great to see that it's not 16 and it is DDR5 X RAM and it's running at 6400 megahertz or mega transfer, so it's a very good speed. You can see the two coolers here, heat transfer pipes, and as I mentioned in the intro, it is powered by our Ultra 5 125H. Now the screen with this laptop, it's a little unexpected in some areas, but uh, it's good what I'm gonna point out with it. So not only do we have a super good refresh rate, 165 hertz refresh, or 120, you can set it to 60 if you still like that. It has a very good color gamma coverage for, well, for an IPS, because it's not an OLED, but Adobe RGB is 91%. We've got P3 color gamut coverage of 99%, NTSC is 89%, and then finally NTSC, which, uh, well, I knew not even having to measure this, that it was gonna be 100% with the screen. So it's really good. And it's an anti-glare coating too. So this anti-glare coating means that reflections, like when I do this, you can't really see any. You see 
a bit of glare, there we go, a bit of glare on the corner, but that's because I've got some really powerful lights on it at the moment. So it's a fantastic screen, it's also two Rhineland, Rhineland Flicker Free certified blue light, low blue light hardware solution too, by the way, certified, and even at lower brightnesses, uh, you do not see any flicker with this screen because it's an IPS, okay, so it's it's very good. So when I lower it right down, that is the lower setting, which is nice and dim, and then the full brightness, which I won't go to right now, that's that 513 I measured, just over the claimed 500 nits. So it checks out. This is a great screen for professional use, very comfortable, great on your eyes. Onto audio, so it's good to see that Honor put six speakers in this, so not just down with firing speakers, but there are some just either side of the keyboard, and as a result, the sound is a little bit better than what you'd expect out of the style of a notebook, or this Ultrabook here, because you may think, oh, you know, it's not a gaming laptop, they tend to put better speakers in gaming laptops, these ones will be terrible, but they're all right. Now, there's a little bit of bass. It lacks a bit in bass, but volume, it is very good. The speakers are nice and clear. So if you're playing back, say, a video or a presentation or you're in video conference calls or whatnot, then the speakers are going to be definitely adequate for that. And that's what they're aimed at, of course. They're designed for those kind of environments. Work stuff, it's good. So this sample I play you, copyright free song, will be set to 80% volume. And it just give you an idea that the speakers are, I think they're good, they're above average. So here we are on Windows. The edition it does run is Windows 11 Home, so not Pro, but it's easy enough to upgrade that to that if you needed to do so. Checking on our RAM, so we do have 24 gigabytes of RAM, of which 23.5 is available to us. So it'll be two chips in there, they'll both be 12 gigabytes, and that is our LP DDR5X RAM, running at the 6400 megahertz, which is a nice fast speed here. So that's great, that's gonna help out the Intel Arc graphics. Now talking a little bit about that chipset, I'll just show you that it does have, as you can see there, 18 threads and it's 14 cores in total, turbo's up to 4.5 with the 125H. So the turbo speeds are a little bit lower than the previous generation, but it still has a lot of power, this chipset. And in the performance mode, which is using the function key and P, you can swap between balanced, okay, smart mode they do call it, and performance. But smart mode is basically like a balanced mode there. And that's gonna give us the 65 watts of TDP. So plenty of power there for doing a lot of things. The SSD we've got is one terabyte that is installed and it is a brand drive, so Western Digital, it's the SN560. So it is PCIe 4.0. And you can see that the speeds of it uh, for PCIe 4.0 aren't amazing, but okay. They're fine, they're just a little bit faster uh, than what you would typically see with PCIe uh, 3.0 from before. It's a little bit faster there. Now they have partitioned the drive a little oddly. Uh, they seem to like to do this all the time. I do apologize for that beep noise just then, uh, but it won't happen again. I just muted my PC. We've got the drive there for Windows, 300 gigabytes, and then 623 for data. Now this is fine if you're gonna put files onto data and you do a factory reset and you don't wipe that drive, you still have your files there. It's probably the reasoning why they've actually done that honor, but I prefer them just to put it all in one, especially when it's one terabyte. I think it would just be better, but you can of course fix that with a partition manager. It's not too much of an issue, but for people that aren't super PC savvy, it may become a bit of a problem if they keep installing things into this onto the C drive there, which hopefully you don't do that. So benchmarks for that Ultra 5125H from Intel. Let's have a look at Cinebench R23 first. You can see we get a very good score there for multi-core because of those 18 threads in total. Singles fine, it could be a little bit faster there. As I mentioned, that 4.5 gigahertz top clock is what is lowering that a little bit, but that's all good. It all checks out here. And then I'll take a look here at, uh, we have a few more benchmarks, a so Geekbench. This is getting, again, a very good score for multi. Single could be better, but it's fine. And our integrated graphics here. So Arc Graphics with this, which does accelerate things like video, which I'll show you soon. Uh, this can be play, native playback of VP9, HEVC, and all that, which we've come to know now for a while, for some time. 
Graphics score here, very good for integrated graphics, and I'll get onto gaming performance later and some video editing just to show you what it is capable of. And Night Raid here. So this is a benchmark that is recommended for integrated graphics, and it's getting a score nearing, getting up there towards almost 40,000, which is very good. CPU score then is again good for, for what it is. So performance-wise, no slouch. Now, how do all these synthetic benchmarks Translate into real world juice. Well, very good. This whole system feels extremely quick and snappy. I've noticed no lag, no performance issues. The Wi Fi with their three antenna setup, typically it's two, but it's a three antenna setup, is very good. But I wanted to point out that it is running with the Wi Fi 6 card here from Intel. It's the AX201. Now, the 201 is fine, it's very fast, but I think. For a laptop in 2024, minimum it should be Wi-Fi 6E, which is slightly faster. We now have Wi-Fi 7, which basically no one's got that router, right? But it should be just a little bit faster there. And that is our drive that I pointed out before, Western Digital. And we do have the fingerprint reader, which is a FPC fingerprint reader. <laughs> it says DISM there. I don't know why, but that's... Okay, the different um, brand of it or the type. So it works really well. That is good for Windows Hello Login. Now, video playback with a couple of demanding files right here. So this is first time testing this out. 6400 megahertz or mega transfers RAM, running this just fine. So no drop frames there, performance is very good. But what about 140 megabits per second HEVC 10 bit? This it might struggle with because it is a little bit demanding, but Look at that, that's flawless. Okay, other Intel systems I have tested out, I've noticed that it can drop frames and just be a little bit choppy, especially when my cursor's floating over the video. But no, that's perfect. It checks out, which is great. I just believe it's down to optimization, perhaps drivers. So running great there, 4K playback, excellent. Here's our webcam, so it is full HD, that's 1080p at 30 frames per second. So it looks smooth, the quality could be a little bit better. You'd notice that there's some grain to it. What I do really like is the microphone. So they are excellent. You don't need to plug in an external mic, use some headphones or something like that. If you are going to be using this for conference calls, well, I do think that audio checks out those microphones, especially camera. Well, yeah, acceptable kind of quality. I wish it was a bit better. So with video editing, our Arc graphics is so much better than Iris XE or the Intel UHD. Timeline is fluid, it's fast. It has accelerated the performance a lot compared to the previous generations of integrated graphics. And this is finally to the point where I can say, yes, you can edit 4K video smoothly or smooth enough, I should say, on a laptop without a dedicated GPU. And this is it. It can do it now, the Arc graphics, even the Ultra 5. You don't need to get the Ultra 7 or the Ultra 9 for that. So that performance is just so much better, which is a big step up. Export times are very good. This is one minute of footage with some very basic edits and you'll see that this is only going to take 28 seconds to export one minute of footage. So it is extremely quick, very fast, and it's pretty much on par with all the other Ultra 5 and Ultra 7s that I've tested out. What about gaming performance? Can you game with the Arc graphics? Yes, you can. Older titles, this is Fallout 4. And you can see, whoa, there's a big frame dip just then. I don't know what that was. Loading things in, caching, I think. But normally that doesn't happen, okay? But I won't edit that out. I won't do another take. We'll keep that in there, but it's it's good. It can run these older games. This is on the high visual settings, just fine. And sometimes in the fights, yeah, you'll get a, a few slowdowns, frame dips, lags and whatnot, but it's in general pretty good for gaming for older titles. But what about something a little more demanding? This is Cyberpunk 2077 and whoa, some major lags. I'm running at 720p on the lowest setting, the lowest preset. And I was hoping it was just because it was caching files in a game. Uh, but it seems like it's not the case. It's almost unplayable here, as you see, as I try to move, it is causing so many frame dips and lags and I'm just getting hit by those cars constantly there. Okay, so when I get up the stairs, this area does seem to be a little bit better, a little more playable, but it's those crazy frame dips that I can't really recommend that you try and play any of these super demanding games. I mean, it'll just dip down to 18 frames per second. This is uh, basically unplayable here. So all up, it is a very good laptop if you're after something that has some power to it. 
You don't need dedicated graphics. It's got a very good screen with some great color gamut coverage. Then this is the model for you. You've got the backlit keyboard, good touchpad, good build quality. It all really checks out and the six speakers on board. The things I like the most about this laptop, you may have gathered when I talked about the screen. So screen is really good. Keyboard's good to type on, I like it. Touchpad is not the best I've ever tried, but it's decent enough. I think most users will not end up resorting to using a mouse, which sometimes they have to with other laptops out there. Battery life, let me talk about that a little. So you're looking at about seven hours is what I'm getting at 30% brightness. Netflix and websites and things like that, Amazon Prime Video, answering emails, documents, spreadsheets, that kind of thing, light use, that's what you're gonna get out of it, which is fine, it's not too bad there. 75 watt hours isn't the largest, neither is it the smallest when it comes to battery capacity. Things where they could improve, well, the webcam quality, as you saw from my samples, it's got a bit of grain to it. Well, the microphones are very good, and the other is the port. So we have the two Type-C ports on the left, that's fine, but remember you have to give up one of those when you're using it on power, because the power, adapter that's included is a type c one so you need to plug in so you lose one of those ports when you are tethered to a desk uh, which is normal with a lot of other brands as well but i would have liked to have seen maybe another type c port and the ports on the back of it i mean that's fine uh they could have put a port on one of the other sides like the right hand side another type a would have been good there's no gigabit lan or 2.5 uh, gigabit LAN port on this either that is missing and it doesn't have Wi-Fi 6e it's Wi-Fi 6 which is fine for most people but I feel there is a bit of a limitation there when it comes to our wireless speeds that they aren't the fastest and then the price tag about 1300 euros at the time of this video I think it's okay but it could be priced a little bit more competitive there if they could bring that down just a little I think would be great and I would love to see uh, the one that they have in China, which has a dedicated GPU. I believe it's an RTX 4060 maybe, or up to RTX 4060, maybe the 4050. It would have been good for those of you out there that wanted just a little bit more with our graphics performance. So that is Honor's Magic Book Pro 16. Thanks a lot for watching this review. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.